As church media creators, we have got a big responsibility, making sure that we're delivering the best possible experience for the people in the room and for those online. Curtis and I have put together five things that every church media tech needs to know. Grab hold of these and you'll be upping your game. One of the main things that I want every AV technician to know is that understanding the technology and how it works doesn't make you a great operator of that technology. I think that sometimes we equate, and honestly, in our whole lives, we're probably guilty of this a lot of times, we equate knowledge with wisdom, and they're not the same thing. And the fact that I can understand how a piece of technology works, and I can explain it to someone else, doesn't mean I operate it well. To operate it well means I need to take that knowledge, and I need to apply it on a regular basis practice. I always try to help our AV guys understand that we're just operating a instrument in relation to our ministry. Like if I'm playing the keyboard, I'm operating an instrument. If I'm running the soundboard, I'm operating an instrument. If I'm running the switcher, I'm operating an instrument. And so when when you when you look at that, the consideration needs to be I can understand exactly how the you know what every note on a keyboard is. But if I've never really played the keyboard and I don't practice, then I'm going to be I'm going to be useless, really. But we have a tendency to think from a technology standpoint that somehow um, becoming knowledgeable about the equipment means that we are good at it. And the truth is that can only come with practice. Uh, as a as a tech in church, it's being willing to understand that no matter how many manuals I've read, how many YouTube videos I've watched, how many sessions of church media creators I've viewed gotten all this great knowledge. Um, none of that replaces me sitting down with my equipment and working with it. And so if you're in a live setting, that means you're running the soundboard while the band is practicing so that you're actually figuring out where everything is, how it works, so that when something needs to change, you don't have to do this. Where is it? Where's the, Oh, there it is. No. Your fingers go straight to it because you've practiced. You know where it is. Your ear is attuned to what you're hearing. If we're running a camera, if we're running the switcher on our live stream, it's we know we know our cameras. We we can go to them. I know what that shot's going to look like because I'm familiar with it. I, during practice, I was there scrolling through the different things. Okay, this person leads this song, so I want I know that I want to go to this camera at this point. It's understanding that knowledge doesn't equal wisdom and making sure that we we balance, we we combine the knowledge that we gain because we're kind of tech nerds and we want to learn how to do this stuff. We take that knowledge and we apply it practically, continually, so that we're practiced and we're really, really good at operating the equipment we operate. And I think that's my number one. Everybody involved, let's say, uh, in the live stream, you know, or the video uh, production end of it, know that a majority of the people that are watching this content that you're creating are watching it on a screen about this size, right? They're watching it on their their smartphone. Everybody is walking around with one of these in their pocket or in their purse. So that is how most people are consuming the content. So we have to keep in mind when we're framing up shots that the person is going to be watching it on a small screen. And what I see a lot is, especially if there's just one camera, that they usually have like a wide shot of the stage and, you know, there's the the worship pastor right here and there's the two people on either side. Um, and then in the back, there's the band members and stuff. And, and then when the pastor comes up and speaks, the pastor is right here in the screen. And we have all this real estate on the screen that's not being used. Viewers are looking on a small screen, so you need to zoom up. You need to have, have like a waist up shot of the pastor and be following him. If, if he's a wanderer, follow him around the stage um, as they're going so that when the person is looking at a small screen, the pastor is taking up this much space as opposed to like where my finger is just a, a little, a little bit. Yeah, I would actually add to that also from an audio standpoint, I always tell people, you know, always listen to what you're recording on, what you expect people to be listening to it on. So um, if you're recording, you know, for something you're going to try to release out to Spotify or whatever, you know, listen to it in, in a set of AirPods, uh, listen to it in a car stereo, realize that your bass response is different 
studio reference monitors are uh, too good, way too good uh, to be able to say, I can know what my final product is going to sound like, you know, realizing that it's coming through these tiny little speakers. Um, and so you end up with, you know, the, the songs that sound like, you know, flatulence because <laughs> there's so much bass or whatever. And so, you know, you got, you got to really look at it and say, from a video standpoint there, but also from an audio standpoint, am I, am I putting something out there that's good for, you know, for this, this platform, as well as for someone's nice system in their living room hooked up to their TV, because you want it to sound good there too. So I do think that's a relevant aspect of producing for the small screen is also producing for the small speaker. I think you're right. Uh, that's that's a that's a freebie there. It's like two, it's like one B, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's um it's different sides of the same coin. This one is critical, uh, and is of course was one of the first ones I thought of, and that is through your commitment uh, and self application, understand the level of blessing your church is receiving. As a, te- as a church tech, you're in the most thankless job in the church. I've always said this. Truth is, if you go scrub a toilet, at some point someone's going to go, wow, that toilet's really clean. Thank you. But the only way you get any attention if you're in the booth is when something goes wrong. Uh, you, you, know, you get the text message in the middle of the stream of the audio is too soft or something's out of focus or there's feedback in the room and everybody turns around and stares at the sound man, uh, even though it's not the sound man's fault. The person pointed the microphone right at his speaker, you know? And so you're in this very thankless job because if you do your job well, you're invisible. You don't exist. The best tech, whether we're talking about video, lighting, audio, whatever, is the one that people just think this beautiful thing magically happened for them. The truth is, when we do our job well, nobody knows we exist. Uh, When we do our job poorly, everybody knows we exist. (laughs) And so it's a very thankless job. What you're doing is, is such a reflection on, you know, what the Bible teaches us about how, you know, the first will be last and about what leaders really look like and uh, the willingness to serve in a position that is thankless um, shows a willingness to serve uh, in a way that a lot of people aren't willing to do and, and apply yourself like now logging in and watching this, you know, you have this opportunity that you could be doing something else. I mean, you could be watching that cat video right now, you know, and instead you're watching this cause you want to learn, how to do something better. And that shows the blessing that you bring uh, and you're willing to apply yourself and commit and be there every week uh, and serve. So don't, don't downplay the blessing that you're bringing to your church and your faithfulness and what that means to the kingdom of God. That's super important. Otherwise you'll get discouraged. I think that it is critically important uh, that as soon as you possibly can, that you have a person who is responsible for the camera. Instead of just having that, that camera that you set up and turn on and then hit stream and then walk away from, that you actually have somebody who is manning that camera, whose job it is, is to follow the action that is happening um, on the stage, in the room, whatever it is. Like, like I, I mentioned earlier, if your pastor is uh, a roamer, we have Lisa who who does 90% of our uh, camera work. Uh, she is tracking him and following him wherever he's going. She is making sure that she is on him so that the people that are watching are able to see him and, and Um, She has that medium shot. And if something starts to happen, if somebody starts to come up on the stage, she will go ahead and move over and follow them because they're the the next thing that's that's going on. Having a person whose job it is, is to follow the action with the camera. It's going to provide a better viewing experience for uh, the viewer. Just because it's cool doesn't mean it's good for your church. Ah, I like that one. Definitely have. So. So like uh, it's First Corinthians ten twenty three I think that says you know everything is permissible but not everything's beneficial I think that from a technology standpoint 
uh, we've got to be willing to apply that because there's all kinds of cool stuff out there. You can watch a million YouTube videos about here's how you can do this, here's how you can do that, whether it's the way you're setting up your live stream, the, the way the camera angles you're choosing, split screens, bottom thirds, you know, or in a live setting, you know, what kind of effects you're using, how much effects you're using, uh, what our lights look like in the room, what kind of activity they have, all that kind of stuff. There's some crazy cool stuff out there that isn't beneficial, you know, and I've watched churches spend lots of money and lots of time implementing technology that doesn't really help them with their mission. And so the important thing is when you see something super cool, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to buy that for my church so I can play with it. You know, no, I mean, you can buy it for yourself and then maybe you can find a use for it for the church or something. But uh, in the long run, just because it's cool doesn't mean it's something your church needs to use. And so always go back to what's our purpose here? What are we trying to accomplish? So